Oh, three, two, one. Well, Mayor Zach, uh, again, welcome back uh, to Mayor's Monday. A little bit of a familiar backdrop here. We've been here once this year already, uh, and now we're here again, and the area is almost unrecognizable. Things have uh, have changed. Folks can see the cranes operating in the background. Uh, these uh, couple of construction projects here are moving along pretty good. Yeah. So uh, tell us just exactly where it is that uh, that we're at again, and uh, what's, what's changed since the last time we've been here. Well, it's hard to believe we're already into late November. Um, we're standing officially in the Centralia Center's parking lot, uh, which is also being reconstructed. Unfortunately, due to the onset of early winter weather, we were able to get a base layer of asphalt down, and this project will conclude in the spring. And, and the, uh, why it's significant uh, is because the city uh, is the, the owner of the Centralia Center, and within the Centralia Center are a number of senior, senior and community resource uh, programs, as well as our community theater. Uh, so we wanted to improve the safety and the flow of this parking lot, particularly because of all the other development that's happening uh, behind us uh, in, in the camera shot. Um, the senior housing and the veteran uh, preference housing that's uh, under construction here, which is the, the four-story, uh, 40-unit um, uh, housing uh, development, and its proximity uh, to the VA clinic, which is just across uh, over my left shoulder, or over, over the right uh, camera um, uh, 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 angle. And the VA clinic is currently being uh, constructed, and that project will be uh, completed in uh, late winter. Let's hope early spring, depending on, <laughs> I'll just say February sometime. We yep. won't predict what season we'll be in at that point. Um, but that's another uh, uh, important project. And, and uh, housing is an important thing that we've talked about a lot uh, on our visits throughout the city uh, because, number one, housing is where a job goes to sleep at night. Uh, you can't grow your economy unless you have a good supply of quality, affordable, and available housing. Uh, and Wisconsin Rapids uh, in 2016 did a housing study, and that housing study told us a number of things. One, our housing stock, the age of our housing stock is of concern, um, that during recession periods in the early 2000s, the city and the community didn't experience a, a tremendous amount of um, new housing starts. So the age of our housing stock is a concern. Uh, our, our apartments and affordable housing generally uh, is of a quality that's uh, maybe less than uh, desirable in some areas. So we wanted to promote uh, new affordable housing units as we're seeing uh, here with the Centralia um, uh, development uh, for 55 and older and uh, veterans. And why it's important that uh, the community uh, has a preference or, or places a priority on some of the senior housing is that uh, when you create uh, affordable senior housing units, many of those folks are moving out of the single family home. So that creates an opportunity for young families or families in general uh, to acquire starter homes or, or as a place, as, as we talk about um, the availability of inventory in our market, uh, the number of housing or number of homes on the market today is very small in comparison to the demand. Um, so by adding new capacity in the market in the case of uh, apartments, which will be independent living uh, for individuals uh, 55 and older, as well as some preference for families uh, as well. It's not entirely a 55 and older and veteran preference development. Um, it'll create opportunity for uh, individuals looking to purchase those homes that those individuals might be leaving from. Uh, so housing really uh, plays a critical role in our uh, city's uh, economic future, particularly as we're trying to attract workers and talent. Uh, Wisconsin Rapids is fortunate, like many communities uh, in central Wisconsin, have a very low unemployment rate. Uh, so a record low unemployment rate, and that requires us to reach out to other places to attract talent uh, to meet the uh, current demand and the future demand for jobs uh, that are in the community. Uh, it, actually, just recently I, I searched the Job Center site and there were over 300 postings uh, for jobs uh, in the Wisconsin Rapids area, uh, many uh, well over uh, the uh, minimum wage, which is exciting to see uh, employers and wages rising in our community uh, for those that are looking for work. Yeah, and uh, you know that all ties in as well. You mentioned affordable housing. Yeah. Uh, in there, there was some you and uh, some of your peers here in Central Wisconsin recently went to Washington D.C. for an entire national conference on affordable housing. Uh, you know, we've seen presidential candidates talk about uh, plans for affordable housing. It's not just here; it's it's nationally. All fifty states right. are are uh, concerned about this issue. 
Yeah, in particular, Wisconsin uh, commissioned a report talking about uh, the sheer or near crisis stage that affordable housing is facing our state, and Wisconsin Rapids is is no no exception to that. Uh, so Mayor Wiesa from Stevens Point and I locally, uh, as well as uh, two others from around Wisconsin, rural parts like our communities, uh, attended a, an invite-only roundtable with uh, the Housing and Urban Development Secretary Ben Carson uh, in D.C. for a day trip to talk about the challenges and barriers that our communities face to adding affordable housing units. Uh, as I just mentioned, affordable housing and workforce housing plays such a critical role in attracting business and growing business in a community. If the talent and the labor pool isn't in existence in a community, you have to add capacity uh, for people to where people to live. Otherwise, those folks are going to have to commute from longer and further distances. Which, from a quality of life standpoint. I'd rather have a five, 10, maybe 15 minute commute over one that's maybe 40 minutes if I can't find housing in a community that might offer the jobs available. Um, so the visit uh, to the White House in particular talked about barriers. We also talked about programs uh, that communities like ours uh, may not be taking advantage of, particularly those uh, that are looking for uh, housing rehabilitation. Uh, you know, I look at single family homes all around me and there's some multifamily just over here uh, that's really ripe for reinvestment. Uh, and from a neighborhood stabilization standpoint, we'd rather have home values increasing uh, than maybe real stable or decreasing. And so reinvestment using some of the federal programs can help promote housing values in our community. Yeah, you always talk about that. You know, you make an investment in the house because it's going to pay you back. You'll make money on it in the long run. Nobody wants to see the value of that house decrease uh, during the time that they're living in it. So obviously if, if that's, you know, if, if statistics are showing that in your community, it doesn't look well for your community and it's not going to make you nearly as attractive. Exactly. Yeah, and you need a, a diverse variety of housing stock. You just don't build new apartments and ignore single family or duplex or, or some townhouse style developments or even condos in some cases. Uh, you need a, a, a variety and a diversity um, of available options for folks to uh, really consider your community as a place of choice uh, to move their family or, or to, uh, to raise a family. So then, uh, coming back from that conference, I mean, what did you what did you uh, learn? Is is there something that you'll maybe be implementing here in Wisconsin Rapids in the near future from your talk with uh, with Mr. Carson? Well, uh, opportunity zones is something that's been a, a topic that's been reported on in the news. I don't recall if we've talked much about that, but this uh, census tract, this geographic area, is in what's called a federally designated opportunity zone. So investors that are uh, investing money to uh, start businesses, grow businesses, or invest in housing uh, can receive tax credits or tax benefits for investing in an opportunity zone. So the, one of the other elements of the conversation was how are communities leveraging opportunity zones? Uh, and it's something that we're very interested here uh, because people can get a benefit. Uh, and and this, this census tract is more desirable potentially for an investment standpoint versus just across the river uh, behind you. And so we want to continue to leverage and promote that program because in, into next year, when the rules will be finally written by the federal government, uh, we can reach out to investors and developers uh, to make them aware that this census tract presents opportunity, no pun intended, within opportunity zones uh, mm -hmm. to attract their investment from a tax benefit. Yeah, and, and of course, you know, we've talked about some of the jobs that are going to be coming to the area, and that's cer certainly something that will also make the Wisconsin Rapids more attractive when the Metalco plant opens or when, uh, you know, the YMCA facilities open or when the new pool opens, there's right. going to be a lot of positives to highlight here in Rapids. No question. You know, you mentioned the YMCA Boys and Girls Club. That project remains on track. That's over again my left shoulder mm -hmm. uh, in the frame of the camera. Uh, and that project will open in, in the March time frame. Again, possibly impacted by the weather uh, with some of the construction, outdoor construction aspects. But from a community uh, facility and amenity standpoint, um, we believe that there will be an uptick uh, in interest in uh, home ownership or uh, living in Wisconsin Rapids as a result of these uh, investments that we were making in the community. And so if we don't have the available housing stock or aren't promoting single family development or multifamily development, we're just not going to be able to respond and meet the demand um, that is already in place, not to mention the anticipated demand that might come as a result of these investments in these projects. So again, we've we've talked about housing quite a bit um, in the last, uh, I don't know, about 18 months or so that we've been doing this. We've been uh, spotlighted various housing projects. And, and when the Metalco announcement came, you told me there was a reason for that mm -hmm. because that was one of the things that Metalco you know, was concerned about. And again, you've mentioned it from your t uh, 2016 study. It was something that you're focusing on. 
now that we're a couple years into that study, I mean, do you feel like Wisconsin Rapids is on the right track? And, and how, where are you at in implementing that? Would you say like halfway, three quarters of the way, and what's still to come? That's a great question. We actually just talked about updating that in an interim kind of update fashion in that uh, we've had uh, probably uh, just shy of 100 new housing units come online in that period of time since 2016. So obviously that's resulted in a growing tax base. It's resulted in new measures around how new or, or how uh, recent our housing development uh, is in terms of its age. Um, so it's certainly on the right track. Uh, we continue to promote single family housing. And I think that's an area that we haven't exactly achieved maybe the goals or the aspiration of the study. So we've started to uh, put resources in a program called Rapids Rediscovered. Uh, it's promoting new single family housing development in the city on vacant lots throughout throughout the city that uh, might be overlooked, uh, that maybe aren't marketed uh, to those that are looking to build a home in the city. Um, we've got subdivisions or, or other parts that are um, new construction, but we want some of these neighborhoods to see some of that new investment as well. So the city has put in place a program that people can receive a cash grant after meeting certain criteria for taking on a vacant lot. Maybe the vacant lot had a, a home on it that was torn down or maybe had a house fire or, or some other um, characteristics. So um, certainly as it relates to housing and the study, it gave us sound recommendations. One of the areas that we've talked about um, that also is on our, on our priority list and remains an active project is adding more dense uh, apartments in the downtown area as that'll create more uh, demand for businesses and services in the downtown area. This development certainly fits in with that. It's in its proximity, it's officially in our downtown, uh, but we'd like to see more, uh, in particular the Triangle Project, which is just across from the courthouse. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, uh, that's, so again, something that I'm sure we'll be talking about a lot in, uh, in 2020 as we draw nearer and nearer to that. Hard to believe that that's uh, just a few yeah. weeks away as well. A couple more before we let you go. Uh, you mentioned, we mentioned a couple of times the YMCA project there over your shoulder. Uh, how, are, how are things going on that? And uh, is it possible that we could maybe be on location inside there, maybe in the pool or something in the near future? <laughs> you know, they had water in the pools the last time I was in there. So I'm not sure if we'll be able to get in the pools, but we probably can get in the, the, the aquatic area um, to show on location. They're making great progress. Uh, the last time I toured it, uh, the Boys and Girls Club had all the walls painted and actually just walking over there, to, walking past it today over here, uh, the flooring is, is in some of the areas and the childcare spaces and such. So it's been really exciting to see that project. You know, fortunately, we're not staring at a, a vacant and a blighted mall property. We're seeing a $27.5 million reinvestment in that project. You know, the $4 million housing project, the couple million dollar VA clinic redevelopment, really a confluence of reinvestment in this area. So I think in the future, we're gonna be able to go on location and, and highlight some of the completed projects and not just talk about them as they're in construction. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, the, the outdoor uh, pool by yes. Winter Field, uh, talk about the progress of that as well. We were at the uh, groundbreaking of just uh, few months ago. A few months ago already. Yeah. yeah, they're making great progress. I just drove past it this week and noticed that the slide tower uh, is, is in formation. So the next time we're on location, I think we can go over to the pool and highlight. Uh, by that time, I'd expect the slides to be uh, installed and uh, the building is, uh, the shell is primarily up. It's been incredible to watch the progress at that development. Uh, and that project is slated to open in early June of next year. Fingers crossed the weather doesn't impact the schedule, but that's what the contract with the, with the developer uh, states that they've got to have that uh, completed in, in early June for us to open for the swim season in the summer. And then again, we've got the holiday parade coming up this week. Uh, of course, it is uh, you know Thanksgiving week, so a short week for a lot of people. Uh, just in time, Grand Avenue has opened up as well. Uh, was there some sort of uh, celebration when uh, when that project was completed? Of course, we cut the ribbon uh, <laughs> shortly right before the complete the full completion of the project, where we celebrated with the businesses that were impacted uh, in that area. It's a beautiful corridor now. It's nice to have. Uh, the final phase of kind of our downtown core um, uh, redeveloped and it's got nice streetscape and, and when the summer, the spring and summer comes, uh, the benches and trees and, and some of the other landscaping features will be fully installed. So it'll feel like a downtown corridor that's much more walkable and bikeable with the bike lanes and bike parking. Uh, we also added parking along the segments so uh, people can get through and in, in into the downtown without too much uh, disruption from a street construction standpoint. Overall, a real uh, thorough reinvestment in our community that's, um, you know, as we see construction levels near record or if not exceeding record level uh, construction um, and reinvestment in our community. So it's really encouraging and 
Uh, it's, it's a privilege for me to be a part of and, and to lead uh, this community through a, a period of reinvestment. And, and I think, you know, in a lot of ways, the community's confidence reflects what's happening in this community that um, we're, we're claiming and owning our future. And, and we see a uh, great opportunity to continue to invest and promote Wisconsin Rapids as a place to raise a family, to start and grow a business, as we've seen in some of the other on-location visits. All right. Well, we always appreciate the time. And again, we'll look forward to, uh, to what December brings. Thanks, Michael. Yep.